Deputy Secretary Shanahan, Command Sergeant Major Troxel, distinguished guest, it truly is an honor to be with you today. Thank you for the invitation to reflect on the service and sacrifice of our former prisoners of war, the families of former POWs, and the families of loved ones who are missing as a result of their brave service to our country. This is a day that deserves our attention to the honor of the American heroes who have survived and endured so much at the hands of our enemies and those who have gone missing. We continue to pray that they will return home soon. We honor the families who endure this unique heartache, waiting to hear news of their loved ones. The men and women who wear our nation's uniform selflessly serve their country on behalf of us all. While fully aware of the dangers that they face, they bravely put themselves in harm's way to defend our country, ideals, and the allies around the world. Few people understand the horrors of being held captive by our enemy. The courage of the men and women who have been victims of the cruelest of humanity offer an inspiring example of the human will to survive. Chief Warrant Officer Austin Knapp served with the 109th Medical Battalion, 34th Division, was a German POW for more than two years in Offlog 64 from February 14, 1943 to June 3, 1945. He wrote about his experience using names and pictures to help him stay focused and keep his hope alive. His writings detail the condition he and his fellow POWs endured at the hands of the Germans and how he withstood such gruesome treatment. Knapp observed one year as a POW, the anniversary of his, his year in captivity, in a journal entry that he titled 365 Days. He talked about he had changed putting life into perspective in a new way. He looked fondly on the daily routines that he once thought mundane, calling them the finest adventures of his life. He once was attracted to the idea of being in a foreign country, but now missed walking down the streets with his sweetheart. Despite the hardships of captivity, it might surprise you that the four-letter word he wrote, wasn't a curse word. Here are the last sentences he wrote in that day's entry. That, should, that which I was in yesteryears was not I, but some fix, fictitious wastrid. The shadow of prison walls lies across my soul, and there are barbed wire scars on my personality. But through it all, I've learned that home is the most pleasant word in any language. Home is a four-letter word that kept uh, Knapp going during this, during this ordeal. The promise of making it back to see loved ones and the familiarity with the routine of daily life. He is one of the lucky ones. Knapp married his sweetheart after the war, tended a farm, and raised uh, four children. Today, his family cherishes this book that details his experiences and shed lights on what motivated him to keep fighting and surviving. His story and the memory of others show the way the lengths of our, his story and the memories of others, survivors, show the lengths our enemies are willing to go to defeat our way of life. They are a true testament to the human spirit. These stories need to be heard and they need to be told. The Library of Congress has collected some of these examples of courage bravery and service as part of its Veterans History Project. My colleagues in the Senate and the House of Representatives are joining efforts to share the importance of preserving these first-hand accounts of the men and women who wore our nation's uniform. I grew up in a family moot, mil, rooted in military tradition. My dad was a waste gunner on B-17s during World War II. He continued to service in the Air Force, returning home as a master sergeant and did 20 some odd years of service. At an early age, my brother and sister were taught about the sacrifices our men and women in uniform make. When I was first elected to Congress, 
I used to come home and before my mother passed away, she would grab me almost by the throat and say, John, what are you doing for our veterans and what are you doing for the people in, in uh, uniform? People often think of this in terms of legislation as far as getting things done. While this is a vital component, the Veterans History Project also is another invaluable tool that we can use to recognize the service and sacrifice of our nation's heroes. Every veteran has a compelling story and an important story to tell. Former prisoners of war have an especially unique perspective to share, and it's vital that their memories and experiences are recorded for future generations to hear about and learn from. Just like our POWs and those missing in action, they fought with resolve in our for our, our nation and its ideals, so too shall we be determined to bring these men and women home. No matter where they are or how long they've been gone, we must commit to never give up looking for them and give the answers to the families that are waiting to hear their loved one has been found. It is this commitment that drives us to remote corners of the world where some of history's most intense battles were fought in search of clues, leads, and hope. It is the reason the men and women of the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency spend years investigating possible recovery sites. It's why the agency sends teams overseas for months at a time for extensive excavating missions. And the reason the agency has the largest and most diverse skeletal identification laboratory in the world. I'm grateful for these efforts and committed to dedicating the resources necessary to bring our men and women home. We simply do not leave anyone behind and we do not abandon, abandon those who remain missing. Here's why. 18-year-old Marine Corps Private First Class Larry Roberts of Damascus, Damascus, Arkansas fought against the Japanese on the island of Betio in the Tarawa Atoll in November 1943. He was one of the thousands of Marines and sailors killed in the battle. In 1949, his remains were declared non-recoverable, but more than seven decades later, he was identified. In June, he was returned to his family and laid to rest with full military honors at Arlington National Cemetery. Had we given up, Private Robert's family, friends, and loved ones would not have had the opportunity to pay their final respects and give him the proper burial that he was due. Private Roberts gave everything for his country. While we cannot ever fully repay him, we must strive to fulfill our promise to him and all, the, and all of those that are missing. Each day when I walk by the POW MIA flag outside my office, it's a reminder of the obligation we have to our prisoners of war, those missing in action, and their families. No one should ever wonder whether their son, daughter, mother, father, husband, or wife who served in uniform is or when they will return home. To our POWs, thank you for your steadfast commitment to our country in the hours, days, weeks, months, and years of despair, torture, and hardship. To the families waiting to be reunited with your loved ones, thank you for your sacrifice and thank you for your courage. And never, ever give up hope. Thank you very much.